first question <coughs> that I should ask you to, to, to do is explain to folks mm. what you mean mm. by this. Arguments for a colorblind America. What do you mean when you say that? So a lot of people equate colorblindness to I don't see race mm -hmm. or to pretending not to see race. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big mistake. We all see race, mm -hmm. right? And we're all capable of being racially biased, so we should all be self-aware to that possibility. My argument is not for that. My argument is that we should try our very best to treat people without regard to race, both in our personal lives and our public policy. Of course. And the reason I wrote this book, thank you. Thank you. The reason I wrote this book is because in the past 10 years, it has be become very popular to, in the name of anti-racism, mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children and in general that says your race is everything. Right? And I think that is the wrong way to fight racism. And that's why I wrote this book at this time. Can I, I'm sorry, baby. Yeah. Can I just point out that there is a reason for that? You know, when I went to school, getting any information about anyone's race was not taught in <coughs> history. There was no black history. None of those things were taught. And here in America, 100 years ago, when I was a young woman, <laughs> that's how people saw you. That's how they judged you. So. I think, I don't want to say it's the, your youth, but I think you have a, a point, but I think you have to also take into consideration what people have lived through in order to understand why there has been such a, a, a pointing of very specific racial things. Like, women couldn't go to co get into colleges. If you were a black person, there were a lot of colleges wouldn't accept you. Trying to equal the playing field. I think that's what a lot of folks were, have been trying. And not even people your age were discriminated against to go to college. I mean, again, you could have gone to whatever college you wanted to go to. <laughs> and again, probably let in with scoring less because you were black. I mean, we have to understand during the 1970s when you would have gone, I mean, again, everything was open and equal if you could have met the criteria to get into the school and probably, probably less because you were black and because affirmative action became very popular during the 1970s. So again, man, stop lying, number one. And number two, just because Coleman Hughes is, you know, I don't know how old he is, man, 30, whatever, just because he's younger doesn't mean his view is any less valid. As a matter of fact, it's probably more so. Because, again, his view is from now, not from, you know, years ago, from now. And, again, man, what he is saying is that everything is equal, everything is open, and we don't need to teach our kids that, again, you're less than because of the color of your skin. Because, again, you are not. There's nothing in the law that, again, prevents you from doing whatever. And that's all we can ever do. We can have things open and equal under the law, and that's it. But, again... When you try to have programs that promote certain people because of the color of their skin, that is discrimination. I'm not going to deny that, but I think I view this notion of a colorblind society similar to the idea of a peaceful society, which is to say it's an ideal. It's a North Star. Mm -hmm. And the point is not that we're ever going to get there. We're not going to touch it. But we have to know when we're going forward and when we're going backwards. And we're going backwards when we're doing woke kindergarten in San Francisco uh, you know, with, with, you didn't hear about this story? No, you, no but wait. <laughs> wait, wait, because yeah, I yeah. want to get to they, the part yeah, of the book. Yeah, okay, you actually, you yeah. believe that public policies that address socioeconomic differences would be better at benefit, benefiting disadvantaged groups and that race-based policies often hurt the very people they're trying to help. What are some, some examples of policies that would be better at reducing uh, racial disparities? So my overall argument is that class socioeconomics is a better proxy for disadvantage we all want to help the disadvantage and the question is how do we identify them right the default right now in a, in, in a lot of areas of policy is to use you know black and hispanic identity as a proxy for disadvantage and my argument is that you actually get a better picture of who needs help by looking at 
socioeconomics and, and income. Mm -hmm. that, that picks out people in a more accurate way. Well, but, so, just, and, and, not my question. You guys, man, he's 100% right. You're 100% correct. I mean, if we can help out some, we can help out all. And it doesn't matter what color they are. I mean, we don't need to have programs put in place that identify certain external characteristics. You know, again, that you're 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 black or you're white or whatever, but you're male, female, doesn't matter. Again, we help out people based on their income. You know, not 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 ba based on their income, where they're from, what communities they're from, but not based on the color of their skin. <laughs> this uh, this is absolutely ridiculous. You know, again, man, somebody that makes, you know, below the poverty line, doesn't matter if you're white, black, whatever. I mean, again, you you have the same level of 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 where you came from as far as your income, as far as how much money you have, and how much resources you have to put into something. Doesn't matter what color you are. So again, I fully agree with the what he's saying, but Sonny does not. When you say that uh, socioeconomics picks out people in a better way than mm -hmm. race, mm -hmm. when you do look at the socioeconomics, you see the huge disparity between white households and black households. You see the huge disparity between white households and Hispanic households. So your argument, and I've read your book twice because I wanted to give it a chance, mm -hmm. um, your argument that race has no place in that equation is really fundamentally flawed in my no, opinion. No, well, there's two separate questions. One is whether each racial group is socioeconomically the same. That, well, the, I agree with you, they're the, not. The, yeah, they're not, and the stats the show is, that. But the, yeah, of course, I agree with that fully. The question is, how do, you, how do you address that in the way that actually targets poverty the best? Great. And what Martin Luther King wrote in his book, Why We Can't Wait, mm -hmm. is he called it, we need a bill of rights for the disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, we should address racial inequality. Yes, right. we should address the legacy of slavery. But the way to do that is on the basis of class. And that will disproportionately target blacks and Hispanics because they're disproportionately poor, but it will be doing so in a way that also helps the white poor, in a way that addresses poverty as the thing to be addressed. Sonny doesn't like the fact that white people might benefit. Again, it's not that we're taking anything away from black. We're not. But we're saying, hey, look, there are some white people that are poor. So again, we're going to address the, the issue of poverty. Not the issue of race, but the issue of poverty, where, again, the focus needs to be. But black and brown families will get more of a benefit. Why? Because more black and brown families are poor. But we're just not going to exclude the white, which is what Sonny wants. True, but as you are a student of Dr. King, I'm not only a student of Dr. King, I know his daughter, Bernice. Right? Mm. So I, I'm going to get to my question. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Um, I think the premise is fundamentally flawed. You, you claim that colorblindness was the goal of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. based upon Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, you know, content of character versus the um, color of skin. <laughs> Bernice, Dr. King's daughter, points out that four years after giving that speech, actually, um, Dr. King also said this. A society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for Negroes. He also said in 1968, it was about less than a week before he was assassinated, this country never stops to realize that they owe a people kept in slavery for 244 years. So rather than class, he did write about that earlier on, right before his death, he made the argument for racial equality and racial reparations. And so your argument for colorblindness, I think, is something that the right has co-opted. And so many in the black community, if I'm being honest with you, because I want to be, 
believe that you are being used as a pawn by the right and that you're a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's not a Republican. Well, so how do you... Who, who, he's who never voted well, you, for you, 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 you've said that you're a conservative. No, you, you, no. No, you did. You actually said that uh, <coughs> in the podcast that you did two weeks ago. I said I was a conservative. He's not a, yes, he's not, yes, you did. So, but my question to you, my question to you is, how do you respond yeah. to those critics? Okay, let's let give him okay, so an answer. Yes, first thing I want to... I, I think it's very important. The quote that you just pointed out about doing something special for the Negro. That's yes. from the book, Why We Can't Wait, that I, that I just mentioned. Yes. A couple paragraphs later, he lays out exactly what that something special was, yes. and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based po uh, policy. But he also okay. says you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't, he says it's yes, a- Yes, he does. Okay, well, everyone can go, everyone should go read the book, Why We Can't Wait. Let's not get sidetracked by that. Yeah, give me another one. Um, I don't think I've been co-opted by anyone. I've only voted twice, both for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Although, I'm an independent, I would vote for a Republican, mm -hmm. probably a non-Trump Republican, if they were compelling. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any evidence I've been co-opted by anyone, and I think that that's, that's a, an ad hominem tactic people use to not address, really, the important conversations we're having here. Guys, we have got to remember just because, you know, the alt right or whatever she said agrees with him doesn't mean number one, they're using him. And again, even if they were, even if they're using his product to say, hey, look, man, even he says doesn't mean it's wrong. We have truly got to understand that. I mean, again, you're not gonna change your book. Again, something research. Again, you know the facts. You're not going to change that just because somebody that you don't like agrees with it. I mean, again, fact is fact, regardless of who agrees or doesn't agree. So again, we have to understand that. And again, if Martin Luther King said that we have to do something special for the for black people. He would be wrong, but again, I I'm I, I don't know. I truly don't know. But if he did say it, I'm saying if he said it, he would be wrong. Uh, again, we have to understand that you know. <laughs> hey, look, if you start propping up another group by trying to correct things that happened to way in the past, in the present, you're going to wind up. Number one, with resentment and, and again, hate towards blacks, which again is, is what we're trying to avoid. So again, we don't need to prop up any group above another group at all. Things need to be open and equal. Equal opportunity, not outcomes for all. That's the way it needs to be. And again, you can't do anything else but that. But you can't correct the past to do the, the idea of fixing it now in the present. You can't do that because, again, it's never going to work. The past is over. The past is the past. All you can do is have things open right now. I have a question. Because you write that the anti-racism movement, there are a couple of People, I don't even who, know who they are. Maybe you Robin D'Angelo. Robin D'Angelo, yeah. Ibram Kendi, for instance. Okay. Well, they, uh, you say that that is just a form of, another form of racism, and you even say it has a lot in common with white supremacy. How can you compare those two things? You, I you compare talk about anti-racism. Because... You're comparing it to white supremacy. Because they, they both view your race as a... a extremely significant part of who you are. So r white supremacists, they obviously say, we all know what they say, okay? Uh, Neo-racists like Rob D'Angelo, they say that to be white is to be ignorant, for example. Well, uh -huh. this is a racial stereotype, and I want to call a spade a spade and say this is not the style of anti-racism we have to be teaching our kids. We should be teaching them that your race is not a significant feature of you, who you are. Who you are is your character, your value, and your skin color doesn't say anything about that. Right. That's, that's actually misrepresenting so, what, what Robin D'Angelo's yeah. position is. It's in her book. But but a lot, a lot of, and a lot so of here we book. go. And so <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Coleman Hughes, for coming. Guys, man, we have got to understand that people like Robin D'Angelo, yeah, they're black supremacists. That is what they are. I mean, again, people get upset, they get mad, they can boo and whine and cry and, and say whatever they want to say. 
But the fact of the matter is, we don't need to boost anyone up above another group based on the color of their skin not, or the sex. Not at all. I mean, again, you're making things un- unequal when you do that. That is what you're doing. I mean, you're, you're, you're actively discriminating against other people because of the past. You can't do that. I mean, again, the people from the past are dead and, and again, on both sides. So, again, you're trying to prop up certain people. Because, again, you say the victims, even though they're 25 years old, whatever. They're victims of slavery, of Jim Crow, whatever. And the people that, again, you're holding down because, again, maybe they're scoring higher, but they can't get in because they're white. You're holding them down because, again, of all the bad things white people did, even though, even though they're 25. Again, we have truly got to understand what they're doing. And again, they're destroying the country by, because again, we're, we're going to have a backlash. There's going to be a backlash. And again, they're already yes to some degree. Again, it's causing issues in numerous ways. It's causing issues and it's not fixing a thing. I mean, it's impossible. It can't. I mean, again, you could say, oh, we feel better now because, again, we got 25% more black people that, you know. But, again, it's not real. If you had to prop up them over others, it's not real. It's not real at all, especially if they score less. And, again, I'm not saying black people always score less, not at all. but. When there's actual programs that say you can score less and be allowed in because you're black, yeah, that's an issue. That is an issue. And again, anyone who advocates for that is a black supremacist. But guys, man, if you would, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks. <laughs> You son of a... You son of a... You son of a...